my kingdom is officially registered for the upcoming storm of stratagems kvk the season is going to start in less than an hour and a half and at this point i'm going to do what i always do before every single kvk and that is share with you guys all of my commander pairs my talent builds my equipment sets and my armaments that i am planning to use for this upcoming kvk that way there's a hundred percent transparency and you guys know exactly what i am doing because it's one thing for me to make a video talking about what the hype hypothetical best commander pairs are and it's another thing for me to show you exactly what I am actually using but before we jump in what's going on guys cheers so my first commander pairing no I'm just kidding can you imagine this for some reason this is what the game auto filled in like why what logic is this why would it, why would it automatically fill this in I don't get it anyway let's jump into the first commander pairing and that is none other than Tarek with Liu Che now as you guys know I am still working on Liu Che right now he is five five one two and I got a ton of sculptures from my most recent live stream if you missed the replay I highly recommend you check it out there's chapters in the live stream so you can jump exactly to the moments where I spin the wheel and we got an unbelievable I actually think it is the luckiest hundred spin I've ever done in the five years that I have played rise of kingdom so I definitely recommend you check it out but we've gotten a ton of sculptures of Liu Che and that means that if I'm not mistaken we have one more wheel of fortune left before there's going to be any sort of significant fighting in my upcoming kvk so I'm going to be able to spin the wheel one more time and then of course I'm going to max him for the fighting in kvk you always want to take it slow with these commanders okay get the value out of the wheel if you can you never know how many eight spots you could get and you could save a lot of universal legendary commander sculptures now I did talk about a, a few week a week or two ago I made a video talking about what I think the seven best armies are in rise of kingdoms and it should be no surprise that uh you know from that video i am going to be using the Tarek liu che now i also mentioned in that video that i'm going to be testing out the sargon as well okay so we'll see exactly how this goes uh which one performs better in the open field but i have recently adopted the mindset that rise of kingdoms you know for for the longest time we've had the aoe meta and that is still pretty much the case to this day but really you know there's so many aoe commanders in this game that it's kind of evolved past dealing a lots of damage and it's how can you deal a lot of damage as fast as possible right and in a way like of course that's kind of always been the case but I feel like DPS has never been more important than it is right now and so that's why I'm using the Tarek with the Liu Che so let's go ahead and take a look at the equipment and the armaments and the talents here but first thing you want to notice is that this actually is the one commander in this entire video that is not expertise he is 5515 and that's because this third skill does nothing for open field fighting and I am probably not going to max out my crystal tech I never do so I'm not going to be a rally lead and I also don't have max VIP so there's no reason for me to get this skill there's just not now is that going to make me a bigger target in the open field perhaps and we'll have to see how that actually works but you know we'll see how it goes but with that out of the way okay let's take a look at the equipment here and this is my second best infantry set okay I do have another better infantry set which I'll show you guys in just a moment we have five pieces of legendary equipment here on the Tarek one of which has a special talent that is my hope cloak we also have a couple of iconic crystals here we have three obviously the legs and the boots are the most important because they give you some health as you can see the accessory are a bit lacking here and again I think this, these are probably my worst accessories that you're gonna see in this video if I'm not mistaken so bear with me I know we're starting off a little bit slow here but I'll explain why in just a moment okay and there's actually a logical reason why Tarek with Liu Che is in the first commander deployment slot we'll talk about that in a second um you could see here that I'm rocking the Sakura Fubuki we have obviously the talent here which is nice 17 percent attack you could use the gatekeeper shield here really it's gonna perform pretty Pretty much the same as far as I'm concerned and then we have the talented ancient stratagems and the talented silent trial the stratagems is probably in my opinion the best epic accessory that you can be using and that's because troop capacity number of troops is directly proportionate to how much normal attack damage you deal counter attack damage you deal skill damage you deal it is literally just more damage so you might as well use it obviously silent trial is pretty solid as well if we take a look at the armaments this is also uh, my second best armament set for infantry and they're actually pretty similar although the inscriptions are definitely better on the first one but here you can see that the infantry armaments and the archer armaments 
compared to last video which i think i did back in april um that is pretty much the biggest change between then and now my cavalry armaments i got pretty unlucky with they're like maybe slightly better um, but really the infantry and archers are where i made some decent ground here so you can see we have nine and a half percent attack 8.6 percent defense and two percent health a little unfortunate with the health we have half a percent of all damage no march speed here you can see that the calm inscription says whenever i deal skill damage there's a 30 percent chance to gain 10 percent attack for three seconds okay that's pretty cool and then devious gives me 2.5 percent extra skill damage which is a little bit unfortunate you'll notice here that i'm not using the arch formation right which you may expect liu che is going to be dealing a lot of the damage here because Tarek is single target the downside of that is that i just don't have good arch armaments right like i just i can't use it if i don't have good stuff right so it is what it is obviously you know this isn't going to really help my liu che either but this is kind of the best that i can do and i feel like we have a solid amount of stats here moving on to the talent build this is what I'm going to be doing for the Tarek primary and I think that this is actually a pretty good talent build for a defense tree now testudo formation a lot of people tend to not like this but one thing you have to remind yourself is that with Liu Che he has a chance of an extra normal attack which means you have an increased probability of this occurring which is a 15 percent damage taken reduction for one turn it's only for one turn but I mean, you're going to be popping this more often with Liu Che, and I think that that's actually nice. You get some extra value out of the Testudo formation. Loose formation over here, 9% skill damage taken reduction. Amazing. We have only two points in no weakness because we just ran out of points, basically. Buckler shield, I always recommend grabbing from the Conquering Tree. 9% less counterattack damage is amazing. In the Infantry Tree, we grab Hold the Line and we grab the Health off to the side, and then we put the rest of our points over in the March Speed here. I could have taken a point away from this to put it in with no weakness I think the March speed is more important here especially for the Tark okay and the reason that I have the Tark Liu Che as the first slot in my deployment lineup right here is because it has the least amount of March speed it's 18 percent infantry March speed which is quite slow and that means it's going to be the slowest army that I have in the open field so if I am deploying like I can instant deploy you know I can do the instant uh release of all my troops right I want the one that leaves my city first to be the slowest one because that way it has a little bit of extra time to march to where I'm actually going so that's why um, I always put my slowest army in the number one spot now with that being said let's move on to my second commander pairing and that is Guan with CPO this is a tried and true best infantry march in the game pretty much if you're going to be building only one infantry army I would say do CPO with Liu Che I think that is the best single infantry army but because I'm running two here we're doing the Guan CPO this is a match made in heaven and there's really no reason to ever break these two up now the other thing I could play with is doing a Liu Che with CPO and doing a Guan Sargon and benching the Tarek we'll see how it goes I don't remember I don't think my Guan Sargon was like an absolute star performer last time I tried it out so we'll have to see um so that's why I'm trying this this setup here I think this is going to perform a little bit better now taking a look at the equipment this is my my best infantry equipment you can see that everything is golden and we have of course the ring and the horn of fury this is the best in slot open field uh, accessories pairing that you can do pretty much and you could see that we do have the hammer of sun and moon and if you guys watched my video where I talked about my 10 mistakes I've made in the five years of rise of kingdoms I think this is probably one of those uh those mistakes is it a bad piece absolutely not but would I have probably preferred the March speed from the legendary four piece set bonus probably a better choice for me you see here we have the sturdy boots of the eternal empire we have an iconic crystal in everything except for the gloves because this is the least important iconic crystal out of all the stuff here so it is what it is i'll get around to it eventually but you can also see we have a special talent in the hope cloak and a special talent in the eternal night so pretty much defense on all these pieces like it's an, an insane amount of defense on this set which is good because guan yu has no defense we have plenty of attack from both guan yu and from Scipio. so i think this is overall a, a really solid set here taking a look at the armaments you could see that this is 
probably my best infantry set for armaments it's very well rounded a little bit low on the attack side which is fine because we have 4.7 percent attack 7.9 percent defense and 7.8 percent health unfortunately no all damage here which is very uh not great and no march speed but i think from a stat spread perspective this is okay now again if you're watching this video and you're comparing it to like when i showed off you know wild lion and mr hope and those types of whale players you know those guys have like 10 percent in every stat which is like insane so you know i'm not on that level guys okay and i don't spend just to be clear if you guys are wondering about my armaments i don't spend money on armament bundles i don't spend money getting armaments for pretty much anything okay all the money i spend in this game goes towards commanders and equipment because those are things that i feel like i have more control over and sometimes you know like with crystal tech i'll buy the pop-up bundles because you get decent value there for the crystals but for armaments it's too random for me and i spent like 120 transmutation stones and i opened opened like probably between purples and golden chests I opened like a hundred of those and my armaments really barely moved in and over the course of like six months so it's way too random for me I don't love armaments and if you guys are interested I'll make an entire video talking about you know that whole process you know I, I actually recorded all of my armament openings and tra transmutations so I can make a video about that if you guys are interested and I'll basically talk about why I don't really love armaments that much but um here you can see that I do have some inscriptions which are new and the hunter inscription I actually got from my previous kvk you get this from the kvk shop this gives you five percent skill damage and when dealing direct damage to a single target you get ten percent otherwise it's two percent overall having this on guan cpo is amazing obviously I really need that we get two and a half percent march speed from here which makes up for the fact that we don't get it in the stats we also take two and a half percent less skill damage and we deal two and a half percent extra counter attack damage so some nice little inscriptions on this and I think this is definitely one of my better sets as far as armaments go and then when we take a look at the talents here you'll see that I actually come all the way up to feral nature I grab buckler shield and then we don't have that many points left over for the infantry tree so we grab strong of body and we grab all of the march speed that we can over here now I could take half a percent away from normal attack to grab some more march speed is that worth with it maybe you could make the argument but at that point we're splitting hairs and I don't think it's really worth a talent reset I don't think it's really going to move the needle that much maybe I'm wrong there not really sure um one thing that I'll talk about here for just a second is feral nature uh if you look at my videos from probably a year or two years ago um I typically avoided feral nature I would just basically come up and grab rejuvenate and grab clarity and then move the rest into the uh infantry tree the thing with feral nature um over time you know if if you look back to you know when Trajan first came out and people were using Trajan with Joan or Trajan with Mulan you had some people running Karak war drums I think that there was a lot of ways to be getting rage at that time I think at this point over the next six to twelve months I think we're gonna see less Trajan use now I could be wrong about that we could get an insane leadership pair for him that just pulls him back into the meta right so you know we don't know for sure but I suspect I'm I'm basically willing to bet that we'll see less Trajan over time which means we'll see probably less Mulan less Joan of Arc epic Joan of Arc which you really don't see that much already to be honest with you also William could be power crept out at some point he's very versatile in terms of his buffing but um I feel like we may start to see unless we see new commanders with massive damage factors that have ways to give you more rage I think we're gonna see some of those rage buffing commanders used a little bit less over time and I think that it's never been more important remember what I said earlier with DPS meta it's never been more important to fire your skills first right so regardless of whether feral nature is going to make you over rage or not and I think that there is a good chance in murder balls that you will be over raging with feral nature that is a penalty that I am willing to take in order to sort of guarantee that my skill shots will fire before my enemy because that just means you're going to silence them first that just means you're going to be dealing more damage because you're going to have more troops in your army so yeah if you you guys were wondering why I run feral nature on pretty much everything now I think it's just I, th I feel like you kind of have to I'm not willing to risk not getting feral nature at this point I think there's just there, it's too risky okay moving on to my third army and that is going to be Boudicca Prime with Juge Leung now this is a pairing that has definitely not changed since my last video but uh the inscriptions and armaments have which we're definitely going to go over here in just a second and I might have crafted I think I might have crafted one new piece for their equipment I don't remember exactly all the 
equipment right now is actually on Juge Leong because there's no fighting going on. So I use Juge Leong primary with YSG secondary in my Canyon lineup. So that's why all the stuff is on him. But this will all be moving over to Boudica prime primary in kvk fighting obviously both of them are expertise i don't typically recommend expertise in Boudicca prime anymore especially if you're going to pair with julia leong but this is the equipment that we have here obviously the chest and the gloves are talented i did that on the live stream a long time ago if you missed it you missed it but it was epic i was super stoked about that you could see that i'm still running a couple of purple pieces here to be honest with you because i just haven't really seen the need to change them and also i've been hoarding a ton of materials uh lilith if you're watching i've been hoarding a ton of stuff here because like i don't know what to expect from the upcoming equipment changes so like i'm willing to to craft things and spend this down but lilith i gotta see like where's where's that equipment update like what's going on what 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 i'm confused i'm confused i gotta change some of this stuff but like I, this is starting to feel a little outdated you know what i mean and uh i just i'm too i'm i don't want to change until i know what the future holds you can see i have the dragon's breath bow and this i crafted because regardless of if i got a talent or not i knew that it would be a upgrade from the golden age which is the talented purple sword so i crafted this because it was a safe craft and i also crafted it i believe before they announced that they were considering changing the equipment system so it is what it is i haven't really done anything with it just leaving it there i have a concealed dagger i've had this dagger forever so i don't know where to put it and i figured i would put it here it's got an iconic crystal in it so it gives me some more health which is nice and i have a call of the loyal actually with the archer talent so i can get six and a half percent extra march speed i really have nothing else to put here if i'm being honest with you and also Boudicca prime with Juge Leong can sometimes feel a bit slow in the open field I'm sure if you use that pairing you've noticed that uh, as well so this kind of helps counteract that a little bit now obviously I wish I had something more powerful to put here but um I think the March speed is still important now coming over to the armaments this is where I feel like I made a lot of progress for my archer sets you can see we have eight percent archer attack 10.9 percent archer defense which we already have a bunch of it from my equipment and we have 3.1 percent archer health and 3.4 percent all damage which is really nice but the inscriptions here are amazing um i actually got this piece on my live stream uh the one where i actually my most recent live stream where i spun the wheel for liu che and i got a ton of sculptures i got this armament from a blue chest which i was not expecting and it's legendary it's amazing so that was easily one of my luckiest live streams ever but having the combo inscription it says whenever the wielder uses an active skill their troops deal eight percent extra skill damage for three seconds which means this is basically an extra venomous sting which is four talent points right which is insane so that's a really good inscription to get for literally free like i didn't have to do anything to this i got this armament exactly as it is no transmutation stones it has best in slot archer defense three and a half percent which is amazing and we got some decent attack a little bit of all damage there which is nice i also have respite whenever this wielder's troop is attacked you have a 10 percent chance to reduce all damage taken by 10 percent for two seconds that's pretty good it makes this a bit of a tankier pair and assertive says you deal two percent extra damage while on the map that's really really good as well so overall i feel like the inscriptions here are really good and the stat spread is solid i really like how this came out and again i've invested basically nothing in these i have a couple of transmutations here uh, I, I actually ran out of transmutation stones if, I, if i'm not mistaken um i have no transmutations here obviously because there's no inscription on there and i have 10 remaining out of here so like yeah like i have barely invested transmutation stones in this set i'm pretty happy with that coming over to my boudica for the talent build you could see again we grab feral nature you want to pop the juge leong's active skills as fast as possible we obviously grab venomous sting that's amazing and you also grab razor sharp for nine extra rage for every normal attack you also grab rapid fire you get one and a half percent normal attack damage here and then i only had two points left there was nowhere to put them that would get me better value then here i was gonna get attack here attack here attack here uh half a percent attack here uh so the really i had nowhere to put the points i had to get archer attack so that's what i did one and one and you're done moving on to my fourth commander pairing and that is huo with william now again this is actually my second best cavalry set of everything 
but the reason that it shows up before my fifth set is because again this is kind of in descending order from uh march speed right so this is my fastest army my second fastest army and so on and so forth two and three uh between these two they actually might be pretty close honestly because i have more march speed on the infantry we have 39 percent versus the uh i think it's 18 percent here 28 percent but if you guys didn't know archers have a higher base movement speed just base stats wise so archers you know out of the gate are going to be faster than infantry regardless so these two might run about the same in the open field but in general it's descending from from fastest okay so here we have huo with william now let me go over this really quickly because uh, i mentioned this in previous videos but i think the best pairing for huo was is Joan of Arc. and after i did a little bit of testing for my previous kvk it turns out that it doesn't really matter who you pair Joan of Arc with whether it's huo or whether it's nevsky whichever one she's with is going to perform better and the other army will will perform slightly worse by this about the same margins so you know one army is performing a little better one army is performing a little worse and if you switch it it switches so it kind of evens out regardless so i'm using the huo with the william and i'll explain why later but you can see that this is my second best uh cavalry set here and you can see we have five legendary pieces and the pieces that aren't legendary are still really solid and i don't feel like i need to change them right away like for example um um, Ash of the Dawn here is best in slot, but unless I get a talent on it, it's only half a percent more health. Now you do get the iconic bonus, right? So like that is obviously better, but as my second best set, I feel like this is really good. I have an iconic crystal in the boots of the hellish wasteland and also in my Mora's web. I crafted this a very long time ago. It doesn't have that much use, but it does have some March speed reduction for calves, which I think is nice. And I also, again, get the iconic crystal bonus here. So this is probably a, a, one of the mistakes on my account. You could probably consider that for sure. We also have the silent trial. And of course we have Navar's control best in slot heavy armor of the hellish wasteland also best in slot for the chest we have the war helm of the hellish wasteland so really we have defense health health we have health and health so we're stacking a ton of health here and then a bunch of defense on the heart of the saint so overall i think this set is very solid and definitely something that you can use in the open field i don't regret this at all one thing that you that you should know and one thing that i'm planning to do moving forward is i'm going to be building a, like probably three more rings of doom and three more uh horns like that's probably my priority right now i just want to get my accessories done because i don't really know what they're going to be doing with the rest of the equipment system so i might as well just go for those because they are pretty much the best in slot unless they introduce more accessories which i mean they could do that they they could this is the uh, formations and the armaments that i have here so you could see 6.9 percent nice cavalry attack 1.5 percent cavalry defense 5.7 percent cavalry health 3.1% all damage, which I really like there. We also get 1.5% March speed, which is cool. And we have a 10% chance to reduce incoming skill damage by 20%. I think that's a really good inscription here. I really, really like that. Obviously we're lacking a little bit on the defense here, but I think we have it on the, I think the helmet and the weapon. So nothing too crazy there. The cavalry attack and all damage. I really like on this set. And I don't think I've done, I used all the transmutations on this and uh, it didn't really work out for me this was really unfortunate that this was the best that i could get i hate that you run out of transmutation like why why Lilith? anyway the other two i didn't use any transmutation zones at all so this is a relatively low investment set i kind of just got lucky with what i got here so overall i think it's pretty good taking a look at the talent build you can see we grab feral nature of course and we come up and grab emblazon shield and we grab undying fury for the extra rage i think this makes a lot of sense and of course the rage engine here is amazing obviously huo has the decreased rage requirement for the first 15 seconds of combat typically depending on you know the conditions but usually it's it's a nice rage engine from huo and the fact that he's typically going to fire his active skills first is really nice and that means that your william is going to fire his active skill quickly which means that your the rest of your armies are going to get that rage bonus from the fourth skill here which is great so the faster that you can get this rage bonus on your allied armies the better which is part of the reason why i'm using william with huo instead of the other way around and then finally probably the most predictable is my final army which is nevsky joan of course as i've alluded to throughout this video uh, this has the highest amount of march speed with 43.1 percent and it is 
cavalry so it's the fastest which means if I deploy this last from my city then in theory this will catch up to my slowest army pretty quickly honestly and it is what it is this is a micro optimization by the way you don't have to obsess over this you don't have to do this this is this is like kind of just the way my brain works okay if you're marching more than like a minute away like the Nevsky is going to be ahead regardless so it's not that big of a deal but if we take a look at the equipment here you could see that this is my best in slot everything for my cavalry you can see we got the talent on the helmet here which is really nice I think I got lucky with this actually I don't think I actually I didn't have to refine for this I think I just got lucky which was really nice I could be wrong about that I don't really remember but you can see we have an iconic crystal in everything except for the gloves and the weapon obviously and like with my Guan Yu the gloves are pretty much the last piece that I care to put an iconic crystal into same thing with the weapon so you know if you're gonna skip anything those two would be the ones that you would skip because they give you attack and also you can see we did make the jump to the ash of the dawn here which was nice and we have the ring and the horn so throughout my account I have two rings and two horns that's just the way it goes uh, I crafted all those a really long time ago and it's time for more I need more rings I need more horns uh, if you guys were curious I'm probably gonna be crafting rings then horns so I'll do a ring and then a horn and then a ring and then a horn I think rings should come first it's straight up damage like right I think that's probably better realistically it doesn't really matter which one you go for first but that's my set here and then if we take a look at the inscriptions and armaments you'll see that we've made some improvements in the inscriptions and the armaments are uh, maybe about the same as before maybe slightly better uh we lost some cavalry health unfortunately and we also gained some attack and defense i think so yeah we have 5.9 percent attack 5.8 percent defense 1.1 percent march speed unfortunately no all damage we have three and a half percent extra defense which is nice we have 1.5 percent extra normal attack damage we have 1.5 percent extra skill damage which is nice and we have 2.5 percent extra health so yeah I think we made a we got like one extra inscription and the rest of the set kind of probably evens out compared to last time I made a video which is again another reason why I don't love the armament system anyway coming over to the talents here we could see the same talent build as Huo we grab feral nature we grab in blazing shield we grab undying fury and that is I mean this is pretty much the best talent build that I can think of for open field fighting for cavalry now let me explain a little bit more about the Nevsky Joan versus the Huo Joan okay one of the cool things about Nevsky Joan is the fourth skill on Nevsky it gives you 25 percent skill damage and 35 percent extra skill damage after you cast a skill which means your secondary aka Joan of our prime is going to get 60 percent bonus skill damage which is amazing obviously she has the double cast on her active skill so like this is a ridiculous amount of bonus damage which is really good synergy there a lot of players like to point to that when they consider where where should Joan go uh, but I also want to remind you that if you have an expertise Huo you get 25 percent extra skill damage here and during the autumn wind effect you get another 30 so that's 55 instead of 60 now again that's only for your first skill cast but like how often are you going to stay in long battles so I mean it's it it's better for Nevsky I think obviously but it's not as big of a difference in practice as most people think and also uh, Nevsky is just a little bit more well-rounded with his stats so I think that's why it's probably just safer to put the Joan with the Nevsky rather than you know there's no health on Huo he just has a bunch of uh, defense right so you know it is what it is um I think that both Nevsky and Huo are incredibly good commanders and really where you put the Joan doesn't make that much of a difference but because of the fourth skill on Nevsky Nevsky, I think it's just safer in general to put the Joan with the Nevsky that's my two cents again if you want to flip it I'm not going to argue with you because you could make that argument as well and that's going to do it that is all five of my commander pairs for KVK all the equipment the armaments and the talent build so that way you guys know exactly what I'm bringing on the battlefield so you can decide for yourself if this is something that you want to emulate for your account if you made it all the way to the end of this video drop a thumbs up on it it really helps out the channel a ton and it helps get this video out into the YouTube algorithm so other rise of kingdoms players might see it while you're down there put your thoughts in the comments section below I would love to hear from you guys do you think I should move some armaments around do you think that I should switch the Tarek for the Sargon I would love to hear from you guys and also consider subscribing to the channel if you haven't already Ready? we're so close to 60,000 subscribers so go ahead and click that and the bell to be notified the next time that I upload a rise of kingdoms video and with that being said guys thank you so much for watching this has been Omniarch I will talk to you guys again soon peace